Hey, what's up guys? It's Adam with RC Logger. Uh, you may be asking why are all these electronics laying out on this table? Well, um, today we're going to walk you through the um, channel recognition procedure for the RCI 650 and the RCI 450 quadcopters from RC Logger. Uh, we also have uh, complete and total downloadable instructions from rclogger.com. Uh, there's two different types. There's, uh, there's like a, a a written instruction and there's kind of like a picture related instruction uh, and now you'll have this video also I have some build videos online you can check my YouTube channel at Adam uh, RC Logger um, okay enough for plugging so what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna walk you through this procedure on how to properly install your receiver and how to go through the uh, initial setup sequence for uh, the channel recognition uh, what you see in front of you are two uh, motor driver boards and the main control unit uh, also, there's some motors plugged in so I can show you how all this works in the end of things. Um, I've just uh, performed the uh, 7.0 firmware upgrade uh, to these uh, components. Um, if you have anything under 7.0 on the um, RCI tweaker software, um, uh, anything that shows up under 7.0, you need to perform the upgrade. Um, and the data cable is free of charge and the software is downloadable free of charge also. Okay, so the first thing uh, what we're going to do is we're going to install the um, the receiver with the um, 10 ribbon, I'm sorry, the 10 pin flat ribbon cable. Um, obviously this is a lot different than what you're used to seeing. You're used to seeing um, a signal lead and a positive and negative lead in like a three pin clip. Uh, this is not necessary for this uh, particular type of controller. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is identify the power and the ground. Uh, the power is the red wire on this 10 pin and right next to it is the ground wire and I'm actually going to plug that into my already bound receiver uh, to the positive and negative of the um, of the uh, battery port or uh, you could also plug it into the throttle port if you like uh, one thing I want to point out obviously this is spectrum and I know not everybody uses spectrum on every receiver there is a little indicator and you can barely make it out on this one um, there's a little indicator showing you what positive and negative and what signal wires are. Um, if you have any questions or you're not sure, uh, consult your uh, manual for your receiver and you should find it there. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is start installing the channels. And the channels are going to plug into the signal wire only on your receiver. So uh, in doing so, what I'm going to do on this flat ribbon cable is I'm going to start on the opposite side now. I'm going to grab the first wire on the opposite side of the power wire and I'm going to plug it into my signal wire on my throttle channel. Uh, it can actually go into any of the first four channels, uh, throttle, aileron, rudder, or, or elevator. It's up to you, but I just kind of do it in sequence. It makes it a little easier. The second wire in, I'm going to plug into my uh, aileron channel. And like I said, again, it doesn't really matter the sequence as long as they're plugged into the first four channels. Uh, the third wire in, I'm going to plug into my um, I don't know what even that is. That's the elevator here. And the last one I'm going to plug in, the fourth one in, I'm going to plug into my rudder, I believe. Yep, rudder. And that's all, actually all you need to uh, get your uh, quadcopter up and flying is a uh, four channel receiver. You don't need six or eight or anything crazy like that. Uh, and not only will this um, completely work with Spectrum uh, 2.4, it'll also work with. Uh, uh, 72 mag or 35 mag for anybody in the EU or anything like that. So uh, now that I have my receiver plugged in correctly, um, I'm going to set that down and I'm going to turn on dip four on my um, main control board. Dip four is basically the dip uh, switch that you need to pop that guy in. Uh, you need to have on in order to go through the channel recognition sequence. All right, here we go. I'm gonna turn my transmitter on. I actually have it set up as an airplane. Uh, if you do set your uh, initial settings up as a heli um, uh, on the fancier computer radios, just make sure it's a 90 degree swash plate, nothing crazy like that. Um, I would just set it up as an airplane. It makes life a lot easier. Uh, okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to power on my unit. And I have all this stuff laying out for a reason, so you can actually see the LED indications. Uh, the first thing that you want to do before you power your unit on is to make sure your throttle stick is all the way down at zero. As soon as you plug the power in, this unit is going to recognize that the throttle channel is at zero and it's going to automatically um, program that channel. So we'll just give this guy a plug 
and it's going to give us an indication that it's programmed the throttle channel. Uh, you're going to see two red flashing lights, just like that, in succession, then a green light, and now it has recognized what the throttle channel is. And it's going to keep going through the sequence um, until we go on to programming the next channel, which is going to be the rudder or yaw channel. In order to do that, we just take the throttle stick and apply full left rudder, and then back to the center. Now, what happened there was, as soon as I moved the rudder all the way over to the left, a quick green light just flashed, indicating that the, the channel had reached the end of its limit. And then when I returned it, it gave me, it's now showing three quick red flashes in succession. That basically means it just recognized what the rudder channel is. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is perform uh, the same calibration on our elevator, or NIC. And in order to do that, I'm going to push the elevator channel fully forward. and bring it back again. Now I have four flashes. The only thing I didn't notice was the green light. Um, I'm not sure if that really makes a difference. If you're really worried about it, you can go back through here again and uh, do the setup procedure again. And then the final channel I'm gonna do is the aileron. Bring it all the way over and back, or uh, roll rather. And now I have five flashing lights. And then I just got a green light confirming it's done with the uh, programming sequence. So to recap on that, uh, initially when you plug it in with dip 4 in the on position, um, it's going to find zero throttle automatically and show you by indicating two red flashing lights. And the next thing you're going to do is full left rudder or yaw. Uh, and then there you're going to get, uh, once you bring it back to center, you're going to get three red flashing lights. And then you're going to do the elevator or nick. Uh, you're going to push it completely forward, and when you bring it back to center, you're going to get um, four flashing lights uh, in sequence, and then you're going to do left aileron, or roll, um, and you're going to get five flashing lights, and then it's going to go to a solid green light. Now this concludes the programming of your uh, main control unit. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to unplug the main power supply, and we'll shut the transmitter off here. And we're going to turn the dip 4 into the off position. There we go. Now, all dips are off. And we're going to turn the transmitter back on. We'll see if we can't get a couple motors to spin here. And we're going to plug the power back in. Now you're going to get some beeps, some different lights. I know my receiver is bound. It has power to it. And the main control is ready. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, start the motors. I'm going to give this left rudder. And they're rolling. <laughs> I had to shut that off because the motor's rolling across the table here. Um, as soon as you do, basically, you've, you're, you're done. You've actually programmed all the channels, uh, and then um, you're ready to go fly your model. So um, to recap that, um, it's basically a simple, straightforward setup. Just make sure your channels are plugged in correctly, and uh, thanks for watching the video.